And as always, we're going to be looking for accurate context, good risk management, and always exercising good patience. Anytime you're talking about fundamentals in a market and direction, fundamentals take a little bit of time to play out. We got crude oil today. Kind of trading yesterday's value area really nicely, low to high. That's what we're here for, is to put ourselves in the best success. Trading routine does that, builds that habit, lets you know what to work on, what to reflect on, and what to improve on the next day. Good morning and welcome to the Market Forecast. It is finally Wednesday, November the 3rd, the big day this week, the FOMC meeting due out. As always, be thinking about context, risk management, and exercising some good patience. Congratulations to the uh, fans of the Atlanta Braves and the Atlanta Braves to winning the World Series last night. Uh, kind of a long, late night for me, but uh, rested and ready to go today. Hopefully you're all feeling the same way. As far as economic numbers today, a long list of them. ADP numbers came out already at 7.15 Central this morning. They were looking for 400,000. We added 571,000. So perhaps a little bit of foreshadowing on what's going to go on tomorrow for jobless claims and unemployment on Friday. 8.45 this morning Central Time. PMI composite final due out. 9 o'clock factory orders and ISM services index. 9.30, the EIA Petroleum Status Report due out. And, of course, the thing we're all waiting for, the 1 o'clock FOMC announcement. Not expected to make any changes, but there's likely going to be some vocabulary changes going on uh, in the FOMC announcement and in the Fed chair presser itself. U.S. stocks this morning hover just off new all-time highs. Uh, awaiting that FOMC announcement and perhaps a timeline on phasing out of the monthly bond purchases. No rate again, no rate change is expected. However, uh, there will be some expectation of a more hawkish tone. Uh, As far as earnings this morning, uh, Humana came out mixed, Emerson came out mixed. After the close today, we're looking for Qualcomm, MetLife, and Roku. That's, That's... company that I was trying to remember the name of yesterday, NVIDIA, uh, is it just passed, it's now the seventh largest U.S. stock. It's a new vehicle, electronic vehicle company, uh, working on putting it together, their IPO. Uh, As far as crude crude oil is concerned, uh, we get a little bit of a pullback here this morning after the API last night. uh, Came up with kind of a bit of a surprise boost in inventory, uh, 3.5 million barrel boost. The EIA is looking for a 2.2 million barrel boost in crude stocks here in the U.S. today. Uh, my dog, my dog Lacey, if you can hear her in the background, is doing a little bit of griping this morning. She hasn't gotten everything she wanted yet this morning, and she does believe that she is the center of the universe. So uh, I apologize if she's a little bit distracting. I'll take care of her in a few minutes. As always, make sure you hit the lucky like button, share, comment, question, feedback, and heckling are always welcome. And make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's going to be a, an interesting day today, always challenging days when these FOMC numbers come out. Markets tend to be a little bit, um, uh, what is it, uh, um, rangy um, sometimes, sometimes not. Um, it's always a challenge when these days come along. Uh, I find it best to... Be patient, look for your opportunities early in the session, see if you can't make a little bit of money, and then I'm just going to probably wait and see what happens at the FOMC. We'll be having our group coaching session about that time. I've just put the link in so you can uh, register for that. We're going to start at about 1.05 today, so I'm going to be able to 
we're all going to be able to watch any uh, fireworks and any knee jerking that goes on just afterwards. Of course, I do not hold positions into major economic releases. I've had my share of doing that and Overall, I'd say I'm about even, so I choose not to participate in those situations. I may respond to something as time goes on after that number, but we'll have to see how things play out. We never really know what's going to happen on these releases. Um, got to say good morning to everyone. Uh, Ricardo, good morning. Edmilson, Felix, good morning. Vince, Chris, Ricardo. Yeah, Mattress Mac lost some big money. I guess he was uh, he had bet heavily on the Astros, and he's hurting this morning. Sorry about that, Mattress Max, but that's what happens when you play the game. Uh, Theo, good morning. Robert Kennedy, first snowfall in your neck of the woods. Wondering where you are. Uh, Jen News, uh, Ricardo, snow already, right? Uh, already decent here. Snow already decent here in the Detroit area. Mitten State. There you go. <laughs> Isaac. Uh, George. Harry. Good morning. Drew. Good morning. Alfred. Uh, what can we expect in the market today prior to 1 o'clock? It's always a good question and always something that, uh, that we have to try and be patient. My suggestion is really just... Trade what you see today. Uh, there will be opportunities. Look for the opportunities that offer a little bit of risk for a bigger reward. We're always thinking about looking for those asymmetric opportunities. Uh, Spencer, let's see how many times Jay Paul says transitory today. I like Ricardo's idea of that. Good, good morning, Charles. Don't want to miss you. Uh, you could have a drinking game there, Spencer. We might all be drunk by 2 o'clock. Central, that is. Be about a half hour. Uh, Zerain, good morning. Patrick, Brian, Harry, good morning. Robert S. Uh, hey, happy birthday, Robert S. Happy birthday. You're finally of age. You can start drinking in bars. Uh, James, Ryan, Nemo. Dovish with the log logistics fiasco. Nemo. You may, be, you may be on to something there. You know, every time they start to think they're going to be a little bit tougher, something happens and they just to, to try to have to sit back and wait a little bit longer, it seems. It's a good thought, Nemo. David Svatislav, good morning, Urias. Go Braves, yes. Uh, link for group coaching. Looking forward to seeing you there, Chris. Hey, Lacey, Chris says good morning. Oh, she's finally settled down a little bit. Good morning, Alec. Uh, is there a requirement for funded traders not to trade into the FOMC press conference? No, not the press conference itself, but the FOMC meeting at 1 p.m. Central, you're going to need to be flat for. As far as I know, sometimes things change. I would definitely check the website. Uh, Mickey in. Good morning, Doctor VJ Wen. Uh, Rob T. Good morning, James. Alec. Go Braves. Was crying tears of joy last night. Hey, awesome, Kenneth. What up, Hog Lacy? What were the ADP results? Well, they were looking for four hundred thousand. Came up much higher at five hundred and seventy-one thousand. Now there was an adjustment to last month's number, but it wasn't that tremendous. So. Robert, you're in Elk County, Pennsylvania. It's snowing already. Wow, Pennsylvania. Uh, Got to be thinking about Christmas already. Yikes. It's only November. Uh, DeCorey and Terrence. Yeah, we've got a pretty thick layer of frost around here this morning, but uh, no sign of snow yet. All right. VIX up slightly at 1611. Dollar index down slightly at 94.02, and the 10-year yield down slightly at 1.54%, if that's going to help. Uh, let's take a look now into our charts, as always, starting with the daily and crude, just going to left to right, no particular order. Everybody knows the rules, one bite each. 
kind of a unique situation on these charts this morning, noticing on my, on my, uh, my, uh, December chart, I'm missing days. We go from the 27th to the 28th to the 29th to the 3rd. So I'm using the continuation chart, which has all the information on it. Um, get my notes here. So we had a boost of 3.6 3, uh, 3. million barrels yesterday by the API. We're expecting 2.2 million barrel boost by the EIA. Obviously, sellers have come into this market in a short time frame. Remember, we have been talking about the, the, the idea or the fact that we've got, you know, a, an upward move that seems to be falling into a range-bound activity, a range-bound period of time. It's healthy, actually, for the market to do this because but with all this buying going on, we tend to get a little bit too long and either we fall into a consolidation to even out that inventory. Hey, it didn't switch to my screen. Yeah, my, glasses. Yeah, my glasses on. Thank you. Thanks. Thought I fixed that, but uh, all right. So let's start again. API, 3.6 million barrel boost in inventory. EIA looking for 2.2 million barrel boost. Open interest, uh, we added 3,400 in open interest. And um, overall, it's it's uh, it's been a uh, holding steady to maybe an overall loss in open interest. Uh, um but yesterday, again, adding 3,400, so a little bit of more interest in this market, but still range-bound, still short time frame controlled. Balanced, coiling, triangle formation, something uh, likely to happen. Take a look at the 30-minute chart. We've got about two, one and a half minutes before the open. Look at how short this market is in, in short time frame. Okay, we've, uh, we've, well, let's take this off, remove. We've already checked that point of control. As far as inside the weekly kickoff high and low, all of the other visuals as far as points of control have been revisited. This market is in a bit of a random walk, and we're going to see what happens this morning. I think this is a really good morning to watch the opening because settlement is all the way up here, 83.91. All night long, we've had short time frame sellers coming into this market. Now, is this going to be an opportunity for us? We've got a gap. We've got overnight inventory well to the short side. We've got new information due out here in, um, in a little while here, in about an hour and a half. What are all these longs looking for? They're looking for help from the longer time frame, stronger hands traders to come in on the U.S. regular trading hour open and continue to push price lower. I'm going to stay here for just a moment. We're going to put on this one minute chart, which shows it should show the opening range, which is one minute long. So we have just started the opening range. I'm not sure what the heck this is. Okay, it says that's the opening range, but now we're going to see what happens. This is a one minute chart, so we're going to watch and see this first minute. which doesn't seem to be operating correctly. Let's see if it uh, shows us after this first minute the way it showed yesterday. I already checked yesterday's. Okay, so we've left the opening range at the high of the regular trading hour session in crude. You can see the high is here, the low is here. So far, what the longer time for the short time frame 
overnight short inventory are looking for, they are getting. They are seeing selling coming into this market to the downside. Take a look at the 30-minute chart again. See, we're seeing what we were looking for. If I'm short, I'm happy. We've left the opening range at the high of the regular trading hour session. As long as that remains, I'm not going to be looking for too many longs until we get to some sort of reference area like last week's low, like weekly kickoff low. But that gives us about a 80 tick move to the downside. If we cannot hold the opening range as the low of the session, let's say we take out the high of the opening range, that may be enough to start to scare some of our overnight shorts into capitulating and getting out of those overnight shorts, which could bring us to a gap close, even so much as a move back towards settlement. Where did this begin? Uh, five o'clock yesterday, the move to the downside started around 83. Remember that number, 83 was where Fred was talking about wanting to look for longs yesterday, and boy, Fred was certainly right. It wasn't a huge move or a big range, but 83 was the spot. Now what was supportive now becomes resistant. We see if we can hold this opening range at the high of, this, of the regular trading hour session and try and sell strength into this as long as we hold that. It switches microphones. Hmm. Let me see something here. Does that sound the same now? Check, check. Check, check. Let me know if that sounds the same. Still the same. All right, Chris, thank you very much, and I will check that out. Yeah, this is a different way of, of adding the charts because of was having trouble with the, with the, the different way of doing it, and... Um, Obviously, it's a different sound. But thank you for letting me know about that, Chris. Uh, definitely want to make this as as, uh, as good as possible. More echo than Mike. Okay, about the same. All right, I'll check it out. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got our opening range at the high of the session in the, in the crude oil. We're looking for more information, not looking for a huge move from this. It's just important information to know that that high of that opening range, the high of this bar. Let's just point that out there. 8166, high of the opening range. We take that out. Some of these longs might start to get a little bit nervous. E-mini S and P's. It's you know, it's all about the FOMC meeting today. And it's uh we're all about grinding on to the upside here, right? We just the market just continues to roll higher. It's just what the S and P's, it's just what the equities do when there's no bad news. Um, it's, it's, uh, you know, with the uncertainties in the world and with what's going on with politics, um, I think a lot of the focus on the equities is, is now going to be, of course, what the FOMC does as well as, uh, what the tax scene looks like moving forward. We're going to be very, I think, in tune with what goes on with taxes over the next year. Right now, the market is obviously not that concerned about it. Shorts just continue to get squeezed. We lost a thousand in open interest yesterday, so there's no big rush to get into new longs up here. It seems as though we continue to uh, just eat shorts on the way up. Uh, lower, you know, um, lower open interest. Looking looking at the, the action from yesterday, we had okay volume. What, uh, what, what I really find interesting is in the Delta, 
Okay, we have, uh, what's it look like here? All right, we have negative 14,000 in Delta. That means on yesterday's upward move, more contracts traded on the bid, indicating more aggressive sellers, but price moving in the opposite direction. With the loss in open interest yesterday, it would seem to it would suffice to say that the the market was eating shorts. There were shorts still in this market that were just getting squeezed out of the market yesterday. Now that thousand dollar loss in open interest isn't all that tremendous. It may have been that shorts met new buyers. These are things that we have to, uh, to hypothesize because we never know 100%. Now we're waiting for the FOMC. Um, you know, we, we know what we're seeing in the daily chart. We, we put in all new highs uh, yesterday. Those all-time all highs did occur in the regular trading hour session. We always talk about the fact that the market has left an all-time high in the overnight. Market doesn't like that. Doesn't take too long for it to usually go ahead and take that out. So here's the reason why I think yesterday was more of a short covering event than a than a than a new position event, because we have the P-shaped profile. We have the market driving higher and then ranging the rest of the day. Shorts trying to get out of the market without pushing the market too far in the upward direction. So. What does that mean for us today? Well, here's settlement up here, 46.23.50. We don't really have much overnight inventory with which to speak of. The reg the overnight session started here, so we've been above, above, below, just back and forth. Now we're just kind of looking at uh, testing value low from yesterday until this last 30-minute period. Uh, the the entire range from last night was largely just inside value low and value high from yesterday no big change in the, in the perception of value looks like all the all the people that are hedging or or kind of wrangling for position maybe where they want to be for the release today and i'm going to suggest trying to stay again very patient the, the market is in range it's in value there's no gap there's no inventory no runs no hits no errors nobody left and the braves won take your time all right nasdaq Upside continues to actually rotate uh, higher and higher. We actually added 3,200 in open interest yesterday, volume maintaining, at least uh, holding up pretty well. Um, we're another all-time high in the overnight session today. That's something we'll be keeping an eye on in the regular trading hour session. But we all know what we are facing today. 30-minute chart. Here we go. Here's settlement, which is... 15, 9, 61 and a quarter. Do we have any inventory with really which, with which to speak of? Mm, P-shape again yesterday, although we did add open interest instead of taking some away. Look at how this market is uh, just really uh, uh, respecting, at least in the overnight, this 20 session exponential moving average. I mean, just almost to the tick. Every time it comes to it, it finds buyers. It'll be interesting to watch that throughout the day, but you know, I'm not sure that that's necessarily going to help us after the FOMC meeting when nothing is probably going to seem to matter if it does become very volatile. Are we holding some overnight longs here? Maybe just a little bit. Are we going to open with a gap? Maybe just a little bit. If that, if we do open with a gap, that does offer a little bit of opportunity. Instead of opening inside range and inside value, there may be an opportunity for us earlier in the NASDAQ if we do open with a gap. Which way that opportunity is? I'm not looking for anything huge, any huge moves before FOMC today. That could always change. We do have, you know, some more fun, some more economic information due out before the FOMC. But believe me, that's the focus for for traders today. So 
if we open with a gap that might offer encouragement to try and get into something earlier in the session, which may or may not be a bad thing. Gold. All right, balance continues, seeing a little bit of a drive to the downside here, but it doesn't really necessarily change the fact that in the longer time frame, we're in balance. In the short time frame, we've broken an upside move to the, an, an upside structure. Makes sense for the market to try and probe down to the next important inflection level, which would be weekly kickoff low, which is 1767 even right down here. We've got last week's low in, in the neighborhood. Um we lost 1400 in open interest okay we, we know that the volume in open interest has been flip-flopping back and forth in in gold for the last you know for the last few sessions or for the last couple of weeks uh very little help from any of the other information other than the fact that we've broken this trend line and now we look to be going down to possibly test weekly kickoff low that's that's interesting that's opportunity for me um we lost 1400 in open interest yesterday. No real help from that. Um, okay. Medium time frame upside broken. Longer time frame in balance intact. What is what are we looking at here for the 30 minute chart? All right. So we have checked this point of control in regular trading hours. We've got another one just below this week's low, which is right here. Last week's low, I should say. Uh, now this week's low, one more little point of control down there before reaching the opportunity for us to see the weekly kickoff low. Uh, we've got a whole lot of shorts in this market that are currently getting paid. I don't want to step in front of this without some sort of structure. Weekly kickoff low might be exactly that structure I'm looking for. If we stop short of that, then I'll just be patient away from my opportunities. Again, lots of um, lots of expectations in and around the FOMC meeting today. Um, gap rules. We're looking for opportunity to sell strength unless we can come close this gap, which looks a lot less likely. Again, one last point of control to check before weekly kickoff low. I'm looking forward to my opportunity to see how this market responds down at this level. Uh, the Euro. So let's see here. So this chart is also missing a day. It's not that it's it's not that consequential a day, although it does aggravate me. Uh, this is Friday. This is yesterday. What happened to Monday? Monday was an up day. Didn't really change much inside day. I'm not going to worry about it right now, but. You know, looking at the open interest increase yesterday, we added about 500 to the downside. Um, this market is certainly showing that it is probably on hold, waiting for the FOMC meeting. We've got weekly kickoff high, weekly kickoff low, short time frame control, open interest basically moot, uh, volume very low in anticipation of what's coming out today. The 30-minute chart, no overnight inventory. Uh, no gaps. Uh, it's all about acceptance or rejection inside yesterday's area of value. We are seeing a test of that. We're seeing a test of the overnight low. Overnight low, pretty close to yesterday's regular trading hour session low. Relatively close to value low from, from yesterday. Monday's value low. Here's that day that's missing on the chart. Lots of repair here, an up day, no, nothing all that consequential as it's inside the previous day. Settlement was here, settlement here, no overnight inventory. So we're flying free and easy here in the Euro this morning. Uh, and again, because of the situation of, the, of what's coming out, we're pretty sure that our longer time frame are hedged the way they want to be. We're in short time frame control. We've been in this range. This is an area where until the FOMC meeting, um, levels are likely to be respected. Short time frame levels, that is. 
So here's the tenure. You think the uh, tenure has been waiting for today? I would have to think so. Low volume, open interest increase of 5,500 yesterday. Not tremendous, but that's something to note. But we're still largely range bound inside last week's range. Shorter time frame control still remains until one o'clock today. Um, you know, we, we're getting a little bit of a of a, a rising triangle. We've got some pretty even highs here. We've got some pretty good, except for in a couple of cases here, we've got some higher lows. Um, just just pointing out some of the some of the um, technical things about a market that is largely short time frame controlled. Here's the 30 minute chart. So overnight longs. And we started here. By the time the market opened, we were trading all the way up here. We had all of these longs still inside range, taking market right back to where overnight inventory tends to take us back to settlement or where the overnight inventory began to accumulate, which would be where the market opened last night. Stay patient. Wait for new information don't get cut up at one o'clock. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. We'll find opportunities as the markets kind of work their way out um, after the, the numbers come out. Nat gas. So I think we're having a, a similar problem here. Oh no, this is now this is now, I believe, correct. Nope. We're missing the first. This is crazy. Anyways, what I was noticing about the natural gas volume has been largely maintaining open interest. We lost a thousand in open interest yesterday on this move off the low, but looking at where this market is basically maintaining time. This is Friday. This doesn't include what my thoughts are here including yesterday, we're largely holding and respecting the high and low from the island low that just failed on Friday. So these highs up here look interesting. These lows down here look interesting. I'm not that sure about anything here in the middle. Uh, we've got... Um, overnight longs that continue to get paid yesterday settlement is right up here at five dollars and 54 cents and we haven't left it it's been very magnetic there's no overnight inventory in it or um you know or or reason for us to try and get pushed into something early in the session today uh, you know, the market just opened. There's there, there's very little change to the perception of value here so far. We are looking forward to the net gas numbers tomorrow that may bring some change to this. Uh, you know, it seemed strange to have a, a reversal pattern in net gas so close to when the when the demand for nat gas is going to be at its highest and that's in in the in the winter here in the northern hemisphere we know that there's shortages in europe and uh and in asia and uh we're, we just seem to be able to hold pat here so it is um it's always so important to trade what we see when we see the the uh the crude oil has been moving back towards the opening range here. Let's see. So we still are holding resistance at the opening range. If we've taken shorts below the opening range, the true point of failure is if we take out the high of the opening range by more than just a couple of ticks, this, this move back inside this opening range. Although 
appearing to be very low confidence because we did spend about six, seven minutes there, five, six minutes there, is still valid, still valid until proven wrong. All right. Now I'm going to see if I can get the camera to operate correctly. All right. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at uh, group coaching today. I uh, already have a couple of emailed in questions that are always tackled first, and then we'll try and tackle all the rest of the pictures or all the rest of the uh, questions that come in as the session goes on. I always look forward to these. They're my These are my favorite parts of the week. Uh, always a pleasure to see everybody as always. Um, so that's going to be it for the forecast. We're going to see everybody for group coaching. Dan will be back to, uh, this afternoon for the uh, the uh, market recap. Always interested to see what what uh, Dan's take is on these markets. And uh, I'm going to take my deep breath. I'm going to stay humble, grateful, creative, and patient today. we got about seven minutes before the equities open, so I'm going to get down and I uh, will see you in the pit in just a couple of minutes. Make sure you... Uh, Get out there, profit today, have a great day, trade well, stick to your process. If you start to get upset, realize that you're putting yourself at risk of further losses. If things are going well, then keep at it. Um, again, looking forward to seeing you at uh, group coaching. It will start at 1.05 today in honor of the FOMC meeting. So trade well, everyone. See you in a couple minutes.